Now let's now go to the authorized causes for terminating unemployment. We have redundancy. This is a mode of reducing personnel when the required services are more than what is demanded by the actual requirements of the business. If there is only one employee who holds the position, the redundancy can still exist. Redundancy can exist even if there is no other person holding the same position as that held by the employee declared to be redundant. Now, to be valid, there are certain requisites that must be complied with. First of which is that fair and reasonable criteria must be used in ascertaining what positions are declared to be redundant. What would be fair in, and reasonable criteria? It could be efficiency, seniority, or status of employment, like temporary or casual status. And second requirement for validity is that the abolition of redundant position must be done in good faith. The employer's good faith is not necessarily destroyed by engagement of an independent contractor to replace the terminated employees. Losses is not a condition for redundancy because in a redundancy, what is looked into is not the financial condition of the company, but the necessity of the employee's position. The last in, first out principle is not even applicable to redundancy because in redundancy, what is looked into is the necessity of the position. Next is retrenchment. Retrenchment is a mode of reducing personnel to prevent or minimize losses and thus preserve the employer's viability. To be valid, there are certain requisites that must be complied with, foremost of which is that the retrenchment must be adapted to prevent or minimize losses. The losses can be actual or expected, but the losses, whether actual or expected, must be substantial and not de minimis. Second requirement, fair and reasonable criteria must be used in ascertaining who will be dismissed and who will be retained. The criteria could be efficiency, seniority, physical fitness, financial hardship for workers, or status of employment. Usually, the principle of last in, first out is applied. A third requirement, the retrenchment must be resorted to as a last resort after less drastic means have been tried and found wanting or insufficient. What could be less drastic means? Well, it could be rotation of workers, reduction of working hours, trimming manufacturing or advertising costs, or reduction of bonuses or salaries of executives. Now, how do you prove losses? Well, expected or actual losses may be proven by the income statement or audited financial statement. The financial statements must be audited by independent auditors. The comparative statement of revenue for the last two years is not sufficient. It is not proof of losses. But there are situations when audited financial statement may be dispensed with. For example, if the corporation is under rehabilitation, receivership, presentation of the audited financial statement would be superfluous. Next is closure of establishment. An employer can close down its business anytime, even if it is not suffering from losses. The closure contemplated by Article 298 of the Labor Code is permanent closure, which could be total or partial. Temporary closure is governed by Article 301 of the Labor Code. The closure must be done by the employer on its own volition, because if the closure was forced upon the employer by the government without fault on the part of the employer, the employer is not under obligation to give separation pay. Now, there is a distinction between retrenchment to prevent losses and closure of business due to losses. Closure of business due to losses presupposes a complete cessation of the business operation, or part of it. In uh, retrenchment, to prevent losses, the business continues to operate, but with a reduced manpower. This is illustrated by the case of Alabang Country Club. Uh, Alabang Country Club operates in and maintains a country club and 
sports recreational facilities for the exclusive use of its members. Now it has a food and beverage department. For the past four years, the food and beverage department has been incurring substantial losses. Realizing that it was no longer profitable to maintain a food and beverage department, Alabang Country Club decided to outsource the same to La Tasca Restaurant. This resulted in the termination of the employees of the food and beverage department. So the union filed a complaint for a legal dismissal against the Alabang Country Club. The Court of Appeals held that the retrenchment of employees appeared doubtful because Alabang Country Club failed to prove that its alleged losses were substantial. The issue is, was the Court of Appeals correct in holding that the matter involves retrenchment? What was the ruling of the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court ruled that the Court of Appeals was not correct. The case is not retrenchment, but closure of business or undertaking. When Alabang Country Club decided to cease operating its food and beverage department and open the same to a concessionaire, it did not reduce the number of personnel. It terminated all the personnel assigned at the food and beverage department. So we now go to the termination procedure. To terminate unemployment on the ground of introduction of labor-saving devices, redundancy, retrenchment, or closure of business, the employer should serve a written notice to the affected employees and to the Department of Labor one month in advance. So the lawang notice yan, one to the affected employees and the other to the Department of Labor one month in advance. The notice to the employees must be served personally to the employees concerned. Mere posting of the notice in the bulletin board is not substantial compliance. During the one-month notice period, the employer can require the employees not to work anymore, but they should still be paid their wages and benefits during the one-hour notice period. The one-month notice must be complied with even if the employees knew about the planned action of the employer. If the termination of employment is adjudged to be valid, failure to comply with the notice requirement will not render the termination illegal, but it will merely subject the employer to sanction in the form of nominal damages. What would be the relief for employees terminated because of authorized causes? Well, the relief is separation pay, the amount of which is at least one month pay or one month pay for every year of service, whichever is higher if the termination is due to installation of labor-saving devices or redundancy. But if the termination is due to retrenchment to prevent losses or closure of establishment not due to serious business losses, the separation pay is at least one month pay or one half month pay for every year of service, whichever is higher. But if the closure is due to an act of the government without fault on the part of the employer or Due to serious business losses, no separation pay. A fraction of six months is considered as one whole year.